Jim here with Journey North. Been doing a lot of handled tools, axes, hammers, hatchets, stuff like that lately. And last fall, I came across one of these. And if you don't know what it is, don't worry. I'm going to tell you, because if you ever see one, you probably need to buy it if it's a decent price. This is a Stanley rotor plane. We're going to clean it up, and I'll show you how it works. But before that, I just wanted to show you these. If you ever see one, even in this kind of shape, these little suckers go for $100 to $200 on auction sites right now. To buy new, a Veritas, Lee Nielsen, something like that, they're $100 to $300, depending on how fancy you want to get. The Stanley 71 and a half. Um, well, I'm waiting to fix this up and stuff like that. Um, I'll do some research, get you the exact dates. It's got a patent date of 01. I believe this is a type 3, um, which puts it around like 1906, 1910. We'll lock in some of them dates before, uh, before this video is over. The rotor plane. These things are awesome. Get a good look at it. If you see one of these for like 50 bucks or under, pick it up. I got lucky. Um, this was on Facebook Marketplace and a lot of tools. It was $50 for the entire lot. Um, I called the guy like three minutes after he posted it. Drove an hour to get it. The minute I got there, he goes, he goes yeah, you responded very quick. Um, where are you ripping me off? And I told him that um, I was really looking for this. And told him about what it was worth. Nice old guy, probably in his 70s. This was his grandfather's. And he was a cabinet maker. And not only did he sell it to me for $50 like he posted. He threw in some stuff um, extra that he had. Because he knew that I appreciate it and used it. So I was happy to find this. But I can turn around and sell it right now for a $100 bill. Pretty easy. But let's uh, clean this up. And disassemble it. Um, I'm not a fan of vinegar and evaporus and stuff like that but with the small details on here i am going to give it a bath of this uh it's like a knockoff evaporust um it's supposed to be at like room temperature this has frozen so i don't expect it's going to work as good as it should but it's going to get some of that crud off make our job a little bit easier we're going to go out pretty delicate with this it's worth a little bit of money um not that i'll ever sell it so I'm going to use it, and it is a blast to use. Let's fix it up, get you some information on it, and we'll show you how to use it. That's where the fun comes in. Stay tuned.
All right. So what would this sucker be used for? Among other things, you could use it for uh, stop dados, cleaning up some rabbits, setting in hinges or hardware or decorative things. Um, I just made a stop dado here just to give you an idea. Now you can cut that in and pair it with your chisel. But you can only get that far before you're kinking your chisel up, trying different angles. And let's say you had a piece of hardware that was all the way in there. You'd have to be way up like this. So we'll pair this down, get it to the stop data level we need. And we'll take this. Loosen up here. We'll drop that blade down to the depth we want. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can scooch around here. There we go. I'll, I'll just I'll skew it a little bit, and we'll get up in here. And once you get to that stop dado, you can run it across and cut it. You're taking very fine cuts with this. We'll go a little bit deeper yet, right there. Um, I'll tell you what, this thing's reversible. Let me move this uh, iron around to the back side and uh, give you a little better look. All right. You can use this push or pull. I'm going to pull it towards you just because it's easier filming that way. We got to do a little more tuning up on this iron. Um, I didn't film all that because it's very time consuming. But it's just like a chisel. You want that sucker just perfect. But it's uh, good enough to... Show it how it works right now. And right there, we're all flat except the very end. Back there, we got some high spots. Lower it down. Loosen that up. And this here's your height. Oh, let's see if that's a big enough bite. That's a little bit heavy, but it works. And this came with a quarter inch iron, half inch, and then a, like a chisel point. This is the only one I got with it right now. Like I said, these are very expensive. I ain't got a lot of... I haven't used this one until right now. I have used one before, but not, like I said, the price of them... And with modern day routers and saws, there's not a lot of use for them. But I like the old vintage stuff. It's always more fun. A little better. We get the idea. Stop dado. a lot nicer I think wax it up stop it from rusting any more than it already has these had a nickel plating on them which protected a lot of the top um, my wire wheel took off a little bit that was left over but gave it a nice look I'm happy with it got some pretty heavy pitting on the bottom but for the kind of work I do and like I said type 3 1906 the latest is 1910 this sucker was made um, I believe these are beach handles, the original. Not a lot of color or figure to them. Put a little oil on them and a couple five, thick, five, six things of shellac. They'll hold up nice for many more years. You could always take a lathe and turn some custom ones if a guy wanted. 1906, 1910, Type 3, Stanley, 71 and a half. Closed throat, which is this portion right here. The 71... Had a little arch here so you could see what you were doing. Like I said, you could always put it on this side. A lot of different ways to use this. Um, if you're into these, got one of these, check out some restoration vids other than mine. Like I said, this is probably the only one I'll ever do. Um, if you want to see how to use this correctly, sharpen up this iron correctly, check out Paul Sellers' videos. He's got tons of them. He's the best as far as... Uh, 
sharpening hand tool where it goes. I believe uh, Roy Underhill's got some some videos on it as well. When I picked this up, I paid 50 bucks for a lot of tools. Like I said, that one's worth 150 bucks. This here was also in there. The pride and joy of plane makers. We're going to tear into this pretty soon. I'm excited for this one. It's a plow plane. Probably the most expensive one sold at the time was plow planes. Plane makers, this was their pride and joy. These are all wood. Everything still works on it. Steel, some brass. We're going to get that sucker cleaned up too. Hope you found this somewhat informative. Like I said, if you see one of these at a thrift shop, garage sale, antique store, and they're asking a decent price for it, jump on eBay, find out what it is. Usually they're stamped all along in there. Stanley 71, 71 and a half. Make sure it's got the parts you need. If you can get it for 50 bucks, jump on that sucker. Like I said, this one here, by the time I do the other tools you gave me, probably paid four or five dollars for this. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Take her easy.